Hey everybody, in today's video I'm going to show you how you can pull financial statements and other data from company earnings reports from the Securities and Exchange Commission website. So if you go to sec.gov, you can do a search for uh, a company. In this case I've pulled up Adobe because they recently reported their earnings. And so here we've got the most recent filings. I've already filtered um, by filing type 10. And so you'll notice there's there are documents and there's also interactive data. So if you click on interactive data, you can actually download um, financials in, in an Excel format. So here, if I want to download the income statement, you know, I can do a simple copy and paste. I can view the Excel document and, and download that. So it makes it really easy um, to do that, but not that's not always available. And in some cases, you may want to pull other other data from from a report. So if I go back into documents here and I pull the most recent report, now I've got the actual report. If I jump to sections and income statement, here we've got the same data just in a different layout. And so what I'm going to do is show you how we can copy this into an Excel spreadsheet and then make it into a usable format in Excel to allow you to do analysis and that sort of thing. And it's not just for um, just for the income statement because you could have got that from the other route. There's other other tables on here that you can pull and potentially apply this to. The idea being to, to show you how we can extract this data. And I also have got a, a template that can help you help you do this. And I'll leave a link in the description for this video. So for starters, what I'm gonna do is just a simple copy and paste of this of this report. So I just select this, right click copy. And now what I'm gonna do is jump into an Excel file. And I'm just gonna go in the first cell here, right click, paste, and I wanna make sure I select match destination formatting. And so once I do that, I get rid of all those all those colors and that sort of stuff. So at first glance, it looks okay. I'm gonna auto fit it. But the problem you'll notice right away is there are a lot of, a lot of gaps in here. So using this straight away as a table in Excel requires some work. And rather than trying to fix this and just move these cells over, delete these gaps, what I can do is create a template on another tab. So I'm gonna call this one input, and I'm gonna create a new sheet called output. Now I'm gonna start really basic here and just do a simple formula to pull in the values if there's something there, for, especially for the, for the first for the first column that's gonna have the, the headers. So I'm gonna do an if statement, say, okay, if cell A1 is equal to blank, then just leave a blank. Otherwise, pull in that cell. So I can copy this all the way down. Let's say go down to, say row 50. And so now I've got the, now I've got the headers and the main categories all in there. So I can copy this logic over from this formula over to column B, but I don't want to actually refer to, to column B on the inputs because you'll notice the numbers don't actually show up until column D. So I'm going to make an assumption that you know the, the data that I want to pull in isn't going to be until isn't going to show up until column D. So there's going to be that bit of a of a gap, and you know these these reports, these tables in the in these filings are pretty consistent in that case. So it's a fairly safe assumption to make that I'm gonna skip the, the next two columns afterwards and jump straight to D. So going back here, instead of referencing B, I'm gonna use D. And now if I copy this down, now I've got the values that are in there. Now, just a couple wrinkles in here. One is that I've got the dollar sign in here as opposed to the number. So if I go back in here, you'll notice dollar sign was here, the number was here. And so this is because there was a, there was a leading dollar sign for, for the top, 
top line. So I need to account for that. There's also this, this long dash in place of, of a zero. So I need to fix those things. Another issue is that there's a small space after these numbers. So it's gonna prevent them from reading as numbers. And this isn't your normal blank. I'm actually gonna to have to use a, a character code number um, 160, which is a really narrow space. So if you ever copy data over from a web page, like I did with the with the SEC report, you know you're gonna have potentially those those issues come up where you have these abnormal blanks uh, appearing after or before your values. So I need to update my my formula for for a couple of things. So first, I'm gonna start off with fixing the dollar sign. So I'm gonna just adjust this formula to add another if statement here to say, okay, if it's not blank, then I'm gonna look at the, the value in column D. If it's a dollar sign, then what I'm gonna do is pull the value from E. So I want E1 instead of D1. If it's not a dollar sign, then go back to pulling the value from D1. So now if I copy this down, that dollar sign is gone and now I've actually got the number. So I'm getting closer to where I wanna be. The next thing I'm gonna do is get rid of this dash. So in here, I'm gonna use the substitute function. What the substitute, substitute function allows you to do is replace uh, a certain character with another one. So in this case, this is my, my text, this, this value in here. And the old text that I'm gonna say I'm replacing is character 151. That's symbol for the dash, comma, zero. Because it's replacing a zero, I'm gonna use that as my, my replacement. Yes, to autocorrect, and then copy this down. And now you see, now I've got a zero instead of that long dash. The next thing I wanna do is get rid of those spaces. And the reason I need to get rid of those spaces is if, so if I multiply this by one, convert it to a number, gives me a value error, because it's still treating it as a text. One way you can tell is I'm gonna use the right function and say I want the rightmost character, it's that blank. And so that's not an actual blank, it's character 160. I know because it's a narrow one, and like I said, it's common when you're copying it from um, web pages. So another thing that I'm gonna do now is nest another substitute function within here. I'm gonna make sure I've got it in the right place. So I'm selecting all of this as my text, that first argument. The old text is gonna be character 160 and then blank or nothing is gonna be my new text. So I'm gonna close this out. Now if I copy this all the way down, now I can check this and take a look. Right value here, now it's an eight. So I got rid of that. So now if I multiply this by a factor of one, it's cor correctly lining up as a number. And one way you can tell it by default aligns to the right, whereas text by default will align to the left. And so next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna convert these values into numbers. So I can just do something like one times this. And now I've got this working. But the one thing I need to factor in is the text. Because again, text is gonna give me an error. Right, it's gonna give me a value error because I can't do that. So an easy way to, to get around this, I'm just gonna add an if error function, okay? So I'm gonna say if this value is an error, so I'm gonna go back here, make sure I get to the right um, place. So I got my if error value there. So if the value is an error, I'm just gonna say, go to input D2. I wanna pull it from um, column D because th that's where the text values were. They weren't in column E. So I'm gonna close this out, close my other ones, and now Copy this up, copy it down, and now you can see now I've got my numbers in here, I've got my year. So I could center this, put dollar signs here. And so now I've got something a lot more workable. 
Now what I can do is I can repeat these formulas now for the next one. So here I got the prior uh, year period here in columns J and K. So all I'm gonna need to do now is change these inputs. Right now copied to, to E and to F. So I just need to change all the E's to J's. And then I'll change the F to a K. And and now if I copy this down, I've got my values, I've got my comparables. Again, let's apply the, the formatting here. And so now just like that, I've got the current period and the prior year period. And all I have to do now is just dump any any report into here and it'll automatically format this in my output. So what I can do to, to prove this out is use another, another company. I'll switch over to Apple's uh, latest earnings report. So here's Apple's report. This time I'm gonna do uh, maybe a different report, maybe uh, here we go, the equity balances. So I'm gonna do the same thing, do a copy and paste. And I wanna make sure I go to my inputs page and I can just paste this over. Okay, and now I've got some extra lines here. I can delete these and go to my output here. And so you can see I've got my values in here. I can just format these a little differently. But now this lines up with the values that I had on the SEC report. And so that's a that's how you can get the data from the SEC report into Excel in a in a usable format. So the one tricky part that you may have it may run into um, is when you're copying and pasting the, the data from the SEC report. In some cases, what, what can happen is that you go into here and you know maybe don't grab this just so, and then when you go back to paste it in here, you know it shows up like this. So in that case, you may just wanna try uh, recopying and pasting and uh, you know making sure you're pasting as as formatting as well. Sometimes it's it can be a little bit finicky to try to get it exactly um, the way you need it. But once you've got it downloaded into here, then automatically your template will, will format this for you. So um, if, if you create this yourself, obviously you can use the file that you've done, but I also have a, a template saved for this. So that way, if you wanted to quickly copy and paste data from the report into an Excel file, so that it automatically has these formulas and makes these adjustments for you, you're free to use the, the, the one that I'll link to in this, in this video. So hope you found this useful and uh, thank you for watching.